Welcome to this year's edition of the Q1 Buck Poll. I'm Tim Hart with Mike Big Buck Hoffner, and we have a great season getting ready to start up here on the Q1 Buck Poll. And Mike, we had an awesome season in 2013, and uh, you know, it's time for people to get out there and start prepping to get out in the woods October 1st or youth hunt the weekend before. Now, I'll tell you what, I've been out prepping. A lot of people have been out prepping. I'm looking for a good season. It's been a strange summer, a lot cooler. I think the crops are looking outstanding. Uh, we're back on the rebound from uh, EHD. I'm looking forward to a fabulous season this year. And we are seeing a lot of deer, especially in southern lower Michigan. So we hope to have some big bucks to show you here on the Q1 Buck Poll this year. We're going to talk about last year's prize party we gave away at ATV along with a bunch of other prizes. We're going to talk about uh, the scoring system. I got a rack here. We're going to talk about that. And we're just going to get a, give you a, an overall feel for what's happening this year on the Q1 Buck Poll. We've got the DNR back with us. Tony LaPrat from Ultimate Land Management is going to be with us. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great season, Mike. Yeah, you know, things have changed. The license fee structure has changed in Michigan. We'll fill you in on all the details in an upcoming show. Looking for a great season. He's Mike Big Buck Hoffner. I'm Tim Hart. Stay with us. we got more coming up right here on the Q1 Buck Poll. <laughs> Country Smokehouse was started years ago by myself and Suzanne, and uh, we want to specialize in homemade, old-fashioned sausage and jerkies and things like that. People say it's a destination. They come out for the barbecue, they come out for the homemade sausages. Uh, a lot of organic people, natural people want to buy the product because they can't find it in the local stores. We are the largest processor in the state of Michigan. We invite all hunters to come in, bring your deer in, or just stop in and check us out so you can see yourself. I recommend you come to the Country Smokehouse because you'll never be disappointed. Thurston's Furniture and Mattresses is the place for beautiful log furniture at great prices. Thurston's country location and low overhead means you save money. See us for the area's largest selection of log furniture in Aspen, rustic pine, and cedar. High quality, handcrafted, made in the USA, and affordable. Our great selection of log frame sofa beds offers many fabrics to choose from. Don't pay the high prices at the big outdoor stores. If it's log furniture you're looking for, Thurston's is the place to go to get it at incredible savings. Back here on the Q1 Buck Poll, we are excited, as I just talked about, about this year's season. And you know, Mike, so people understand how the promotion works. Uh, we start with the youth season and also the Liberty Hunt, and we will go all the way through December 31st where people can register their buck or their doe. Yeah, the other thing is uh, they get your, your, your choice of weapon. If you're uh, into crossbows, bone arrows, rifles, slug guns, muzzle loaders, the whole season from start to finish. All right, and the way the promotion works is that you take your deer into any of our locations around the state, or if you're in a part of the state that does not have a registration location. You can download the form online. Uh, it's got all the instructions of where you email the picture, uh, where you either email or fax the uh, uh, form. And you know, Mike, it's very simple. We count up the number of points on each side. We measure the inside spread. We measure the mass around the base of each antler. And then we measure the longest tine. So it's really a kind of a quick, simple scoring method. And, um, and really, it's all about celebrating the uh, great hunting heritage we have here in Michigan. We've kept it real simple, Tim, because I did my fair share of registrations last year when they didn't go to those locations. All of a sudden, I've got a student coming in saying, Mr. Hofner, can you register my deer? Can you do my sister's deer? Can you do my cousin's deer? How about my dad? I did a number of them, and it was a lot of fun. And once you're registered, you can go online to q1buckpole.com, and that's where not only do we have the deer, and we've got them um, all kind of in their own regions, and so you can see who's first, second, third, and all that different type of thing to keep track. Um, 
Um, but then we also have on our website, we've got our TV show, we've got tips and inside information, we've got upcoming events, we've got special deals from some of our sponsors. So you can check it out on our website. We also have Facebook. Now, if you've got something special and you've had a hunt uh, out there this year that you got some great video, everybody's going out and videotaping right now, we would love to feature your video right here on the Q1 Buck Bowl, and you can send it to us and we'll say, hey, here's Mike Hoffner, Quincy, Michigan, taking that big buck. Here he goes. You know what? We've not only done it in Michigan, but we've had a few out-of-state guests call us saying, hey, we want to take a look at the bucks that are shot maybe down in Ohio. So I know people are on the, uh, on our site. They look at it all the time. I've been to Florida. I've been to Ohio, uh, visited a lot of relatives, and have all kinds of people when I wear my garb and have the Q1. Tell me about that. Next thing you know, we're in a lot of conversations. People are going, then I'm getting all this communication back about, I think we got bigger deer than you guys do in Michigan. <laughs> it's a great competition, and I love what we're doing in the state of Michigan. And then we end with uh, prize parties that start late January, go through February, and then we'll conclude this year, probably the first weekend in March and that is where we have uh, gun raffles, auctions, we've got prizes we give away and the final thing that we do is we put all the hunters name that have registered throughout the year but you got to be present at that final party and then we pick one lucky winner and that person wins a Yamaha Grizzly 350 ATV from Custom Connection Motorsports in Battle Creek. You know, I've yet to see anybody not get so excited, man. They're wild. It's out of control. People stay. They want to see that happen. And we thank those guys up there at Custom Connections for doing this on an annual basis for us. It helps kind of culminate the ending of a great, uh, great hunting season. All right. Well, stay with us as uh, we come back. We're going to be talking to Dean Mulner about the wrap room. That is the report all poaching. Uh, we're going to talk about that because as we get into the season right now, uh, you want to make sure that nobody is out there trespassing. Nobody's doing the wrong thing out there and uh, we want to make sure that you have all the information that if you do see something uh, not quite right that you know who to call with that Mike here's a story or two from last year's final prize party Daniel shot a 19 Porter hey Daniel speak nice and loud nice and loud and uh, quickly tell us about that hunt um, I actually shot him on the evening of Halloween when it was raining. Um, two years prior, I had to let the deer go because I was tagged out. He's about a 140-inch bladed 10 then with a bunch of kickers. The following year, I hunted him. Um, never did see him. I ended up tagging out with two dandies before I seen him. I think I overhunted him that year. And then the third time I went in that tree stand, I ended up getting him. So, that's an awesome-looking buck. Did you have it scored any other way? Uh, CBM scored him. And? He grossed 180.1 and netted 171.1. Obviously your biggest buck? By two inches. By two, oh, so you've had another big buck, have you not? That's my 18th one in the records. 18th buck in the records, and, and, and where you're hunting at, sir? Over by South Haven area. <laughs> kind of a general direction, what you're telling me, is that right? Yes, it is. Hey, let's give our first place. Number four region, Southwest region, round of applause. Evan Schlafly. 11 pointer total score 47 and a half evan tell me about the hunt nice and loud right in the mic i've been hunting this deer for uh two years on state land in manistee county uh first year deer pretty much outsmarted me uh come the second year i ran three to four trail cameras uh pinpointed his bedding area moved in on him i was able to get close enough to him on a oak ridge uh right near a swamp uh, opening afternoon, sat in the stand. It was about 40 mile an hour winds, two o'clock in the afternoon. Died down to probably 15 by about seven o'clock. And that's when he walked in, came through on a runway, ended up shooting him at 18, 19 yards. Uh, he was quartering to me. Uh, when I hit him, I hit him perfect, but when I, when I hit him, he spun away from me and the arrow ended up hitting him and uh, went right through the lungs and back through the hind quarter and didn't have an exit hole. So uh, I had no blood on the ground. Uh, looked for a little bit. There was nothing. So I pulled out, waited till the next morning. Uh, me and a couple of my buddies went in there, ended up uh, finding a couple specks of blood, tracked him 80 yards, and there he was laying. Let's give him a round of applause. Our top buck from region number nine. Trophy Class Real Estate. 
specializes in listing and selling unique recreational hunting land and vacant land properties. Hi, I'm Dan Hoffman. We're the premier real estate brokerage firm for Cabela's Trophy Properties in Michigan. If you're looking to buy, we have great properties like this one. Check out this unique 60-acre parcel of land in Van Buren County, just south of Bangor. This property has 23 acres of producing blueberries and 38 acres of hardwoods. This is great deer and turkey land. Call us today or go online to see all of our properties. When a hunter graduates from my new Super Whitetail Boot Camp, he will be in the top 1% of the deer hunters in the country. There's hundreds of little things people need to know to really have the ultimate property. I come in and show people how to put all the right pieces of the puzzle in that property to hold deer, get more born on the property, make them come by the stands, keep them from the neighbors during daylight hours. I'm Tony LaPrat from Ultimate Land Management and I'm inviting you to our new Super Whitetail Boot Camp. Coldwater Gun and Pawn, your concealed weapon headquarters. Buy, sell, trade, we do volume so you have selection with new guns arriving daily. Need ammo at the best prices around? Stop into Coldwater Gun and Pawn. Plus, we pay cash for guns or anything of value, including gold and silver, where we pay the highest prices in Southern Michigan. Plus, we have DVDs, guitars, gifts, and more. Long guns or handguns, come see our selection today at Coldwater Gun and Pawn. Everything for the sportsman. DNR Sports Center. For the hunter, tree stands, bows, guns, and gear, all the top brands. Right here at DNR Sports Center. For the fishermen, check out the huge selection of boats, marine supplies, and tackle. DNR Sports Center. Full service mechanic for boats, guns, and bows. One stop shopping, a huge selection, and the best service around. Come see for yourself and experience the personal service at DNR Sports Center. Everything for the sportsman. Back here on the Q1 Buck Poll, and again, as we talk about uh, getting your deer registered, you can register a buck or a doe to try to win that ATV at the end of the year. And you know, Mike, um, part of the reason why we register doe in our contest is because we do a lot of work with QDMA, and what they are talking about is really trying to balance that herd a little bit uh, between uh, bucks and doe. Yeah, I, I think it's very important to do that. I mean, I go back historically, like I said, in the good old days when I was a lot younger, it was taboo. Uh, to shoot those does, but what you found out uh, through quality uh, deer management, it's the right thing to do is to balance the herd, and it will make a difference in bringing in those bigger bucks to Michigan. And when you talk about big bucks, why, that's why he's sitting here. He's Big Buck Hoffner, and he's got some bucks for you to take a look at from last year to kind of get your juices flowing for this year. Okay, let's start out in the Salt Central Michigan with Evan Klein bringing in a 14-pointer. The score was 59. The Southwest Mid-Michigan region, Chris Smith bringing in an 11-pointer. The score was 51. South Mid-Michigan was Joe Kreft, 18-pointer Tim. The score, 59 and a half. The Southwest Michigan region was Daniel Abbott's 19-pointer, scoring 59.875. The Midwest region was Ryan Olson with a 12-pointer and the score of 52. And in the Mid-Michigan region, C.W. Librox 8-pointer scored 51 and a half. Each and every week, we try to bring you great information from the DNR and other experts out in the field. This year, one of our new features is we're going to be talking with um, um, some business owners, sporting goods stores owners. We're going to try to do um, really kind of a, an equipment review, and so we'll have that in upcoming shows. But right now, I had a chance to talk to Dean Mulner. He's with the uh, DNR, and he's going to talk about the wrap room so when you have an issue out there, you know who to call. Well, we're now in the wrap room, which is the report all poaching room here with the DNR. We've got Assistant Chief of Law Enforcement, Dean Mulner with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. All right, now we've been in the wrap room before and had a chance to kind of take a look at it. Explain how this operation works. Sure, this is a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year operation, Tim. We've got, uh, as you can see, we've got our dispatchers out here and they are taking calls coming in from the public. And when a call comes in, an operator will kind of at the screen behind me fill out this form. They're going to ask for a lot of information. The, of course, the more detailed information we get, the better off the case the officer can make. But again, we man this uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so somebody can call in. Um, a lot of times people will see something during the day that maybe when they get home call in. But with the advent of cell phones now, 
it's almost immediate they can call right in from the field. And probably the big key is where are you located and uh, that way you can kind of match uh, an officer within that area. That's correct. I mean, as you know, we're downtown Lansing. We're on the seventh floor of the Mason Building. However, with our radio system that we have, it's an 800 megahertz system that goes statewide. We can talk to somebody over on the west end of the UP like you and I are sitting here talking here. So this is where we dispatch all the information out to all the districts because what we do is if it comes into, let's say, a Siegel County, okay, mm -hmm. complaint comes in for Siegel County, we're, the, the operator is going to go to our screen and we know who's working, when they're working, and they'll be able to match the closest officer to that complaint to get that information as fast out in the field as we can. Well, and one of the things I think a lot of people know statewide, and that is funding is down, not as many officers out in the field, and so that makes it even more important for people that are outdoorsmen and outside uh, helping you guys out. Absolutely, because, you know, we have the great pleasure of working for the department, okay, as conservation officers. However, the fish and game and the resources of the state belong to the people. You know, we work for the people of the state of Michigan, so we need their help. And that's why we have this uh, 800 line that they can call in and they can be our eyes and ears. All right. Uh, again, with cell phones and mm -hmm. with, uh, they can take photos, they can get information, a license plate number, description, uh, time of date, place, all that type of things, and then call it into us. Never, ever do we want somebody to take any enforcement action on their own. You know, I really want to stress that, be our eyes and ears. But again, it's everybody's resources and we all need to work together to protect them. Dean, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the stories and complaints. I know you had something in Aranac uh, before uh, last year with a complaint uh, and it wasn't just one person. Uh, we had a kind of a combination. Explain that to me. Right. Well, that one came in. That was a actually an Aranac where you wouldn't think a bear complaint would come in. Somebody witnessed somebody shoot a bear off of a combine. Okay, or at least they thought it was a bear. Mm -hmm. You know, again, so they called it in, our officers investigated, and actually that ended up being three people were charged with that one because one person actually did shoot a bear off a combine. Another took possession of the parts of the hide and the claws and things like that, and another person took the meat. So three people were actually charged in that one. You know, and it's, it's a matter of, we get all kinds of calls in here. I mean, anywhere it's from, I've got a person trespassing on my property or I think somebody may be doing something illegal. If you think you've got a complaint and there's something there, give us a call. You know, we took over 6,100 complaints last year, you know, and many, many of those resulted in arrest. All right, so here's a big question though for people out there. When should I not call the rapper? Sure, you know, again, over 6,100 complaints came in here, but we get an awful lot more calls in here too. What we suggest that if you've got a, let's say I want to know, what's the fishing like in Lake whatever someplace, mm -hmm. uh, let's say up in Antrim County, you know, go to our website and that's actually Antrim County's out of the Gaylord District, you know, call the D Gaylord Operations Service Center, you know, mm -hmm. for that local specialized kind of information, because again, we're down in Lansing down here. And our operators don't really know that type of information. So we, we'd like to have them call the Operations Service Center when you have an informational question. Mm -hmm. And then you can get act. we can get you to a wildlife biologist or a fishery biologist, you know, to whatever your question may be. But if, if they're in doubt, you know, should I call or shouldn't I call? Call us. We want our folks to call us. You know, right. So if they're not sure if it's a complaint or not, or even if they're not sure where to go, don't hesitate to call us here. Another thing that uh, people might not be aware of, and that is you do have a rewards program that goes along with this. Oh, absolutely. And this is something that we've had for a long time. Um, Report All Poaching uh, Hotline can get, get you some reward money, you know, depending on the case and you know, how much involvement the person gives us. You know, depends on how much we're going to pay them out. But we encourage people. And, you know, honestly, most people call in iron in it for the for the reward right. some people are and some people really deserve it because they go out of their way to really help us protect the resource mm -hmm. so you can be involved here with uh, helping the conservation in the state of michigan the wrap line is available again as he said 24 7 uh and the big thing too to remind people is you can remain anonymous absolutely if you choose so you can remain anonymous we can get the information we'll get it out to an officer that you won't be contacted a lot because a lot of folks you know are calling because it's a, maybe a relative or somebody mm -hmm. they know right and they're really hesitant you know our officers are professionals and they know how to handle those situations I mean we've been doing it a long time so you can call you can leave that anonymous or if you do want to say you know hey I'll give you my information but you can't you got to help me here because it's a relative let's say mm -hmm. our officers can work with that person on that and I will let everybody know too that we are uh, a big proponent of this uh, on the Q1 buck poll and if anybody is poached a deer or anything when it comes to uh, you know not taking it legally 
uh, we make sure that we are in contact with the DNR. Of course, we have a lot of officers that look at the, the buck pole, the site, and see when deer were taken and all that type of thing because, uh, again, we feel that it's uh, a part of the stewardship out there. Absolutely, and we appreciate your support. All right, thanks for being with us. Thanks, sir. All right, Assistant Chief of Law Enforcement Dean Molnar has been with us, and that's your DNR segment from the wrap room here in Lansing. You're watching the Q1 buck pole. At Outfitters Taxidermy, I do high quality work at reasonable prices. We do it all at Outfitters Taxidermy from birds, small mammals, fish, deer, shoulder mounts, full body mounts. I pay attention to the details in the mount, like your eyes, the nose, and the way the horns are set. Make sure the measurement's all correct, just like it is when you brought it in. If you're not sure how to cape your deer, I can do it for you, show you how to do it, where to make cuts, where not to make cuts. When you shoot that buck of a lifetime, give me a call at Outfitters Taxidermy. Hunting, fishing, trapping, Frank's Sporting Goods in Morley. We've got the biggest selection of trapping supplies in West Michigan um, and the experience to go along with it. So we can teach you how to do everything right here on the spot. Long guns and handguns for any application and expert service from someone who lives the outdoors. Don't forget, we got a great selection of ammo. You'll find it all at Frank's Sporting Goods in Morley. Stop in or call Frank's Sporting Goods in Morley for the best deals around. Hi, my name is Vic Havens and we invite you to stop here at Frank's Sporting Goods in Morley, Michigan. Did you know that Tire City is more than just tires? Marshall Tire, Albion Tire, and Charlotte Tire are all more than just tires at great prices. We're your complete auto repair center. Where brakes, oil changes, steering and suspension, diagnostics, we're more than just tires. We're your complete auto repair facility. Tire City, Marshall, Albion, and Charlotte. Well, great information uh, from the DNR. You know, Mike, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of the different COs out there. Uh, some of the cool segments we got coming up, uh, they do some things with CSI. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I uh, do. We know how to catch you out there. I'll so. tell you what, trail cameras have become <laughs> yes, uh, a very important quality to catching people doing what they shouldn't be doing. But I think above all, uh, the lesson learned from the DNR is, is don't take the law into your own hands. Don't put yourself in a situation becoming confrontational with somebody. Let the DNR handle it. And with that, let's take a look at some more big bucks from last year on the Q1 Buck Bowl. Okay, Tim, we had Tony Losey from the Southeast region bringing in an 18-pointer with a tremendous score, 65.625. Up in the thumb with Scott uh, Hilgendorf, 11-pointer. The score was 51 and three quarters. In the Northwest was Evan Shaffley's 11-pointer. The score, 47 and a half. Up in the North Mid-Michigan region was Walter Ostrowski's 9-pointer, the score of 47. And way up in the far north, Bob Duggar's 14-pointer scored 47 and a half. As I talked about, uh, we try to bring in experts in the field, and today we've got Tony LaPratt. He's going to be with us each and every week, and he's going to be featuring uh, just some insights into having success out in the woods. And today we're talking about archery. Yeah, well, he's talking about getting ready. And I'll tell you what, uh, the biggest mistake you can make is bring your equipment out the day before hunting season yeah. starts. You got to get it on it, and you got to get it on early, and you got to get into that groove, and it will make a difference in your hunting season. Here's Tony the Pratt from Ultimate Land Management and the Whitetail Boot Camp. All right, hunters, what are we going to do? Is it's time to start practicing? Fall's starting to come, and we got to get ready for season. The first thing guys should do when they get their bow out is an inspect it. Make sure that the cables are all okay. You got to check if you have a peep, you got to make sure the rubber is not weather cracked and everything. In fact, it's just better to replace it every year. It ain't worth losing a big buck when your peep uh, rubber breaks off on you at full draw. Now, the other thing is I want to give a few tips on what people do wrong before they even start to shoot. One thing is most people grab their bow wrong. Guys, Good shooters will keep their hands open. You should try to palm your bow. When you grip it and you release your arrow, you're gonna get torque and you're gonna twist your arrow a little bit. So try to keep your hand open. Of course, you want a quality rest, okay? And then fingers versus release. Guys, I'm not trying to change the way you shoot, but some people are great finger shooters and some people ain't. Finger shooting, you have to do everything the same and so do you with a release but you can make more mistakes with the release and still get a clean release every time. Now, when I practice, I put all my broadheads on my bow. I tape it because I shoot with my rest on, my, my uh, uh, quiver on. Now guys, if you take your quiver off, when you practice, your quiver should be off. 
if you leave it on like I do, I shoot with it on and I leave four arrows, then the, and then the fifth one is always in my string. So I practice just like I hunt. Now, the other thing is when you put your release on, with how you tighten it up every time matters. So you gotta make sure that it's in the same situation every time. You can change this and tighten it up and be behind the knuckle, above your uh, wrist. You gotta make sure everything is consistent. The other thing I want to point out is you want to use broadheads when you practice. You don't want to have just field points, so whatever you're going to hunt with is what you should sight in with. So I have arrows. It don't care. I don't care what type of broadhead you use, but you want to practice with broadhead points. And they have these for targets. They don't open up like the regular ones. Uh, many good ones on the market, but most all broadheads will sell a practice head. And the other thing we got to make sure is anchor points. This is the crucial part. Two things I think people make mistakes is they don't have a good grip on their bow right and, and, they're, and they're gripping their bow instead of keeping their hands open. And the other thing is you got to have several anchor points. So me, I anchor right between my old double chin right here, right in the old thing. It works great for me. And then I have a peep and most people need a peep but you want a hunter peep. You don't want that little one when it gets a little uh, dust or it's raining out or misty, you can't hardly see. But guys, we need several anchor points and the key is, is always to do the same thing, identical. Guys, I can take my bow out of the closet, ain't shot it since last December, I go out and throw 12 arrows yesterday and they all were in the bullseye. I start two at 10 to make sure everything ain't crazy. They were right on, I move out to 20, I shot five, I go out to 30, shoot five and right on the money. Now that I know my bow is still all set and this was on the ground, everything like this, now I go up to my tree stand and now I'm going to practice real world shooting. Always great information from Tony LaPrade. And there's somebody who's had a lot of experience. He spends an enormous amount of time in the woods. And if you look at his walls, they are just covered with big bucks because he has a science to it and uh, he makes it happen. You know, he's a really interesting guy to talk to. Plus on top of it, he's a former graduate of ours at the Career Center. But I think he's always had that passion when he was a young guy uh, to get involved in the deer hunting industry. And I'm telling you what, the proof is in the pudding. You just have to look at the walls in his house. That guy knows what he's doing. All right, so it's easy to register your buck or your doe. Uh, we start with the youth hunt and also the liberty hunt, so you can get out there and uh, you know the before October first and and uh, have some success out there. Uh, you take it into one of the registration locations. They'll take your picture. They'll measure your buck. Uh, kind of a quick, simple scoring method, and then uh, you know about a week later or less, we post it online, and you can take a look at where you're at in the standings, and it's all free. That's the bonus. <laughs> And then we'll give away a lot of prizes at uh, some of our prize parties. Again, late January, throughout February, and then uh, that first weekend in March. So. You know, get out there, register your deer. Every single year, Tim, we talk about this. And then the end of the season comes around, and I hear conversations from people saying, boy, I wish I would have registered my deer. It's really, really simple. Just get out and do it. And if you don't know how to do it, call us, bring it in here. I'll register it. Tim will register it. We'll get the job done for you. Absolutely. <laughs> Go online. We've got all the instructions online. It's very simple. All right, for Mike Big Buck Hofner, I am Tim Hart. Thanks for being with us this week on the Q1 Buck Poll. Remember, whenever you're out in the woods, be safe. Kalamazoo's Rock Station. Hey, hey, mama said the way you move. This is The Rocker, 1077 RKR.